Hello everybody! In today's video, I'm going to tell you about basic settings of D-Link routers with the example of D-Link DIR615 and how to configure it. However, you can also use this tutorial to work with many other D-Link routers as they all share similar settings. If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. For starters, plug the power cable into the router and turn it on. If the lights of the front panel don't come alive, make sure you have pressed the power button on the back panel of the router. If you are going to configure the router with a cable connection, get the network cable that comes supplied with the router and use it to connect the router and the computer. Plug one end of the cable into the LAN Ethernet port of the router – you can use any of the four ports available – and the other into the network adapter port of your computer or laptop. Plug the cable from your Internet Service Provider into the yellow WAN Internet port. If your computer doesn't have a network adapter or there is no network cable, you can still configure all settings by Wi-Fi using your smartphone or tablet PC. After that, go to the router settings. To configure a router, open an Internet browser and type the IP address of your router into the address bar – Then fill in the login and password – admin and admin. The IP address as well as the default login and password used to access the settings are usually printed on a special sticker you can find on the bottom side of the router. I'd like to draw your attention to the firmware interface of this D-Link router. In my case, this is how it looks like. However, its appearance could be different. Nevertheless, the structure of the settings menu and names of menu items are very similar. When you find your way around the router settings with the example of this D-Link device, you will be able to configure another D-Link router, even with a different firmware interface. I will show you all the settings with the emulator of the router, D-Link DIR615 firmware and its configurations. For starters, you can change the language of the menu. To do it, click Language and select the one you prefer. You can configure a D-Link router manually by opening the advanced settings, but it could be too difficult if you are a novice user. That's why I recommend using D-Link's featured quick setup menu known as Click and Connect. You can find it in the section Net. Click on Click and Connect. Plug the cable from your Internet provider into the WAN Internet port of the router and click Next. In the next window, choose the connection type – static or dynamic IP. You can find out which one you have by contacting your Internet service provider. Further steps in configuring your router will differ depending on the connection type. First, I will describe settings for a static connection and then for a dynamic one. If your Internet Service Provider assigns you a static IP address, choose it and click Next, then click Export button below. In the window that, op that opens, enter the data you have received from your provider. If the Internet is connected directly to this computer, click on the button Clone MAC address. If the Internet is connected to another computer, enter its address into the MAC field and click Next. If the Internet connection was never provided by this cable before, you need to give the MAC address of the router to your Internet provider. How can you learn the MAC address for your router? It's very easy. Take the router and have a look at the sticker on its bottom side. You will see the MAC address there. Check its settings and click Next. If your provider assigns you a dynamic IP address, select it. Check the box next to the item Obtain DNS Server Address automatically. Click Next. 
apply the changes. In this case, things are way easier. Then go back to the main settings menu and select System to save and reboot it. After the restart, check the network information. If there is a green light on, it means the WAN Internet is working properly. Now let's move on to configuring Wi-Fi on the router DIR615. To do it, go to the Wi-Fi menu, select the access point mode for the wireless network, enter the access point name, set the security mode as protected or open. When the network is open, setting a password is not required. If you choose protected, you will be asked to set a network key, that is, the password to access the Wi-Fi network broadcast by this router. Make sure the settings are correct and apply them. Then go back to the main settings menu and select System to save and reboot it. When the router restarts, your network is ready to use. This was the quick setup menu for the router D-Link DIR615. It will come in handy for novice users or when a new router has to be configured. But if you need to check, correct or fine-tune your router settings, you should open the Expert menu. I will not cover every menu item in detail, because there is so much information that it might be a good topic for a special video. But let's have a closer look at basic router settings – connection, Wi-Fi and DHCP. That is, we will focus on the Net and Wi-Fi sections. So, to configure the router's connection to the Internet, go to Net – WAN. To create a new connection, click the Add button. If you need to check settings of an existing connection, just click on it. This menu is very similar to the one you saw when using the Quick Setup feature. If your Internet service provider assigns you a static IP address, select it and give it a name. Then enter the data you have received from your provider. In the field MAC, enter the MAC address assigned to the access point by your provider. If the Internet is connected directly to this computer, click on the button Clone MAC address. Enter the IP address, NetMask, Gateway IP address and Primary DNS server. All this information you can receive from your provider. Check the settings and click Next. If your provider assigns you a dynamic IP address, select it. Check the box next to the item Obtain DNS server address automatically and apply the changes. Then go back to the main settings menu and select System to save the changes and reboot the router. If you've done everything right and you have an active Internet connection, you can go on to set up your Wi-Fi network. To create and configure a wireless access point, go to Wi-Fi main settings and tick Enable wireless. Select Hide access point if you don't want others to see it. Set the wireless network name in the line SSID. Specify the country. In this case, Leave the channel option as Auto. I recommend choosing the most compatible wireless mode. If you choose only a specific one, there may be conflicts with devices working in other modes. You can restrict the maximal number of connected clients. Zero means there are no restrictions. Apply the changes. The next step is to con uh, configure wireless security and set a password for your Wi-Fi network. To do it, go to the tab Security Settings. You can choose one of the following security options or disable it. If it's disabled, wireless devices can connect to the router without encryption and password. It is strongly recommended to select one of the variants below to protect your wireless network. You can choose any option you prefer, but the best choice would be the fullest and most compatible type of protection. In the field Encryption key, set the password you want to use for connecting to your Wi-Fi network. Save the settings and reboot the router. 
If you connected any devices to the wireless network before you have configured Wi-Fi settings, you will have to reconnect them again after changing the password and restarting the router, and log in again after entering the new password. Mac filter In this menu, you can allow or restrict devices with certain MAC addresses to connect to your wireless network. I'll be brief. To block a certain device from your Wi-Fi network, go to the MAC filter menu, Set the MAC filter restrict mode to Deny. In the tab MAC addresses, specify the MAC addresses of the devices which should be denied access to the network. After the changes are applied, such devices will not be able to connect to your Wi-Fi router even if they have the password. If you set the filter to Allow, then only the devices with the specified MAC addresses will be able to connect to your wireless network. In this video, I would also like to describe one of the router functions which is not an essential one – it's DHCP. Although it is enabled and running by default, I'll try to explain the principle it's based on and the settings you can modify. As a rule, this option is usually enabled for network devices, though some users may have it disabled uh, for a variety of reasons. To enable or configure it, open the router settings and go to the menu Net – LAN. In this page, you can enable or disable the DHCP server mode and set the start IP and end IP for the local network in the corresponding fields. Start IP should be given with consideration of the router's NAT point, so give the IP address following it. For example, if the main gateway is set as 192.168.01, the start IP address can be 192.168.02. 192.168.03, and so on. By setting a certain end IP address, you set the number of addresses the router can assign to connected devices. For example, by setting it like 192.168.0100, I allow the router to assign addresses to 98 devices. And all these addresses will fall within the range from 192.168.02 to 192.168.0100. All other settings are not obligatory, but if necessary, you can reduce the address list time, the amount of time a network user will be allowed connection to the router with their current dynamic DHCP address. When the list time expires, the device that has been assigned the IP address will ask to prolong it. This dialog takes place in the background, so you don't see it, and if there are many clients in this network, such option is very useful, because it prevents the table from being overflown. You can see the address, list time, MAC and IP addresses on the DHCP clients list. With DHCP, the router assigns IP addresses to devices which are connected to its network. Every time it will assign the addresses one by one. In our case, the first connected device will be assigned the address 192.168.02, and the following devices will get 3, 4, and so on. However, there is a way to reserve a static IP address for a client. If you do it, the router will give the connected device the same IP address every time such a device connects to the network. To do it, in the Static DHCP section, click on Select IP, MAC address, and choose one of the devices currently connected to the router. Otherwise, uh, click Add if the device you need is not connected to the router yet. Enter the MAC address for the device and give an IP address which is not used for other devices from the available range. Click Apply, and this device will always connect to the network with this IP address only. How can you learn the MAC address of a certain device to reserve an IP address for it or restrict its access to your Wi-Fi network? For example, with an Android smartphone, you need to go to Settings. About Phone – Status The address you are looking for is given in the line MAC address. In Windows, go to Network and Internet Settings – Change Adapter Options. Right-click on the wireless adapter which is used for the Internet connection and select Status – Details. Physical address is the actual MAC address of the computer's network adapter. Other router settings are rather over-specialized and hardly necessary for average users. We will show them in another video. 
By the way, we have already covered all these functions in a series of videos about tippling routers, and you will find the links in the description. The settings we have just configured are enough to use the router at some basic level. And if you have any questions while you are configuring your router, you can leave a comment to ask one. Hit the like button below and subscribe to Headmaster Software channel if you find this video useful. Thank you for watching and good luck!